good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and unto him be the honor and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, the power of the Lord is present right here, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we're basking in the presence and in the anointing of the Holy Ghost this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we welcome you. We welcome you to our telecast. Thank you for watching the telecast. This means a whole lot to us. And we're thanking the Lord and we're believing God to always be a blessing to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord. We have a very powerful teaching to deposit into your spirit. And so we're going to get into the Word and believe God for a powerful time in the Word and in the presence of the Lord. So connect your faith with us. Let's pray. Let's believe God together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. We love you, Father. We give you our highest praise this morning and to tell you, Father, that you are good and your mercies are from everlasting to everlasting, Father. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you because the blood of Jesus has washed away all of our sins. And now we stand before your presence pure, clean, and holy, just as you are holy, Father. Thank you, Father. You are holy this morning. And this telecast, Father, Lord, is holy unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for what is going to be imparted this morning. And Father, we pray for the television congregation right now in Jesus' mighty name. Give them open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word, Father. And we will be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that is going to be accomplished here this morning, Father, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're talking about what faith is and it's under a uh, master series, if you will, Faith Fundamentals. We've already talked about how faith comes at length, and now at length we're talking about what faith is. And so let's go ahead and let's start with Hebrews chapter 11 for the honor and glory of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And I'm going to read this in the King James and in the Amplified Classic Bible. In the King James Version, it says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'll read the scripture one more time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, in the Amplified Classic Bible, it says it this way, verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of the reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, still another translation says this, Now faith means that we are confident of what we've hoped for, convinced of what we do not see. Still another translation says, Faith is giving substance to things hoped for. Amen. In other words, your faith gives substance to the promises of God that you have hoped for, when you believed that you've received your petition before you have it. Now, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 24, 
Jesus declared the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus declared the following, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Again, verse 24 of Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In the Amplified Classic Bible, Jesus declared the following in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. In the Amplified Classic Bible, it says this, For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Again, verse 24, one more time. For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Praise God. Now, the, the definition that we have been working with concerning faith is this. And it's going to appear there on your screen. So go ahead and write the statement down. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'm going to say that again. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'm going to say that again. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. In other words, as the definition found in Mark chapter 11, verse uh, 24 that faith, and let me, let me read this for a minute. I just have a compelling to, to share this, amen, uh, and to, just to bring it to, when Jesus said, in fact, go ahead, uh, let, let, let's read this one more time, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, but in the Amplified Classic Bible, Jesus said this, watch this, for this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Faith, watch this, faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promise of God is granted to us. Amen. I like that definition too. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. And we will get it, of course. Now, let me, let me say this. Faith, I don't have this written in my notes. This is something I'm getting right, right inside here. So if you want to write it down, go ahead and write it down. Uh, you know, I'll say it, a, I'll say it a couple of times. It's probably going to appear there on your screen. I want to help our, our production people. I want to say this, uh, say this. I want to say this a couple of times. And, and, and may the Holy Ghost help us to bring this with clarity so that our production people can help us in here. R write this down. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. I'm going to say that again. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. I'm going to say that again. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. I'm going to say that again. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. I'm going to say that again. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident that the promises of God are granted to us. Amen. And let me say something to you right now. Believing, trusting, and being confident in the promises of God grows out of the Word of God. Amen.
Romans chapter 10 verse 17 declares the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. It reads as follows, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Again, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to say that one more time. This is Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, we've already established that faith is not hope and hope is not faith. Faith says the promise of God is mine. I have it right now. Hope says I will receive the promise sometime. Faith, now there's going to be a statement that's going to appear there on your screen, and here it is. Faith is present tense. Hope is future tense. I'm going to say that again. Faith is present tense. Hope is future tense. I'm going to say that again. Faith is present tense. Hope is future tense. Amen? Faith is now. Hope is in the future. We believe that we receive right now. We don't hope to receive the promise sometime. We believe that we receive the promise right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus speaking here for the honor and glory of the Lord. Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus declared the following, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. In the Amplified Classic Bible, it says this, For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Amen. Believe, trust, and be confident. Amen. Now we've said this to you, but I'm going to say it again and I'm going to this statement is going to appear there on your screen, so write this statement down and never forget this. Watch this. Agreeing mentally with God's Word is not believing with your heart. I'm going to say that again. Agreeing mentally with God's Word is not believing with your heart. I'm going to say that again. Agreeing mentally with God's Word is not believing with your heart your heart. I'm going to say that one more time. Agreeing mentally with God's word is not believing with your heart. Now, the reason why I say this is because there's a growing number of Christians in the body of Christ that simply agree yeah, I agree that with the word of God is true, but when it comes to the question, but do you believe that what is written in God's word is yours personally? That what God has promised in his word, do you believe that that promise is yours and that you will take it? And as you take it, you believe and receive that it is yours. And when, it, when you believe and receive and take that the promise of God is yours, you will have it. Do you believe that you receive that you will have based on the promise of God in Jesus' name? And when we ask people that who just simply agree with the word of God, they get lost. And they just say, well... I'm trying to comprehend this. I'm trying to understand this, but, but I just don't get it. I mean, I agree that the Word of God is true, but when we ask them, but do you believe that the promises of God are yours right now today for you? That's where people get confused. And as we said to you, there's a significant number in the body of Christ who attend a local church. But let me say something to you right now. If they only agree with the Word of God, but don't believe. Let me say something to you right now. Oh, let, let me give you some scriptural precedents for this. Watch this. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. 
Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, and then verse 13, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, and then we're going to jump down to verse 13. Amen. Well, why don't we do <laughs> praise God. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, and then verse 13 and 14, and then we'll jump down to verse 17 for the honor and glory of the Lord. And, <laughs> you know, I have a great production crew, so they know, uh, they know when Pastor Gil goes off script, praise God. You know, we're just flowing with the Holy Ghost. We want this to be from the Holy Ghost to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. Look at what the Apostle Paul wrote right here for the honor and glory of the Lord. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now watch this, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, notice the next sentence, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 9 again, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me say something to you right now. People who mentally agree with God's word don't believe with their heart. And I'm going to say something to you right now, that there's a significant number in the body of Christ that attend a local church. However, they're not genuinely saved. They have just mentally subscribe to certain religious creeds in that church. They have agreed that certain biblical truths, you know, they agree, you know, they have agreed to certain biblical truths in their mind, but they do not believe it in their heart. There are many People right now who are sitting in church, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this, and I'm probably going to step on a few toes, but it just needs to be said. There are many people who attend a local church, but they're not saved. They have not done verse 9 of Romans chapter 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in their heart. Watch this. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, this is verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The reason why I say this is because, look, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Aside from past for 25 years. Now I'm going to say something about Faith Bible Fellowship of El Paso, Texas. We always make an altar call for people to be saved, to, for people to come to the altar and to believe and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. We do that. We always want to make sure that people are saved and they have a born-again experience with Jesus. Amen. Jesus said something very powerful. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and do this. Let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 3. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. 
Look at what Jesus said right here for the honor and glory of the Lord. Now we know this account. He's, Nicodemus is having an encounter with Jesus. They have a conversation, starting with verse 1 of, of St. John chapter 3. Verse 1, it reads as follows, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. Now, in verse 16 of John chapter 3, look at what Jesus said right here. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now watch this. That whosoever believeth in Him. Notice that sentence. That whosoever believeth in Him. Notice again. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, jumping back to Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, the Apostle Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost again. Watch this. But what saith it? He wrote this to the church in Rome. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You confess because you believed, and you believed because you heard. And as we said to you, agreeing mentally with God's Word is not believing with your heart. And there's a significant number in the body of Christ that attend a local church, but they're not genuinely saved. They have just mentally subscribed to certain religious creeds. And they have agreed to certain biblical truths in their minds but those biblical truths are not in their hearts. Why? Because they only agree with it. They don't believe it. Okay? Now, watch this. Because this is very powerful. Because it's a confusion that is now starting to come into elements of the body of Christ. You know, and, and, and I, need to, I need to give this warning. People who merely agree mentally with God's Word think that they're believing but they're not. There's a difference. And see, when I ask people, and see, you know, I was going to start to say, you know, after, you know, I'm pastoring 25 years, and then also, too, working for over five and a half years at a Christian bookstore here locally in El Paso, Texas. When you work at a Christian bookstore, you, there's a whole bunch of people that come in with very different beliefs, very different opinions, very uh, you know, even some have called it logic. Well, the Word of God is not logic. The Word of God is faith. It is the Word of faith. It's not logic. It's faith. Amen. And we've, we've ran into customers that, you know, and I had to ask them, I said, well, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? And the answer that I always gotten from these people who just agree, said, well, I'm a member of such and such church. I am a member in good standing. I said, that's not what I'm asking. What I am asking is, are you born again? 
is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? And as a result, you have confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ, amen, as your personal Savior and Lord. Have you made the quality decision to repent of all your sins and to surrender your life to Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you've asked Jesus into your heart and you have believed that as Jesus entered into your heart, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do you believe that you are a new person in Christ through the born again experience by coming to Jesus, confessing your sins, repenting of your sins, acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord and asking Jesus to come into your heart and that you surrendered your life to Jesus and you given your life to him and he in turn has come into your life and has changed your nature, causing you to have a brand new nature in Christ Jesus, causing everything in your life to be made brand new. When I ask that question, those religious people who merely agree, they just look at you like as if you came from another planet. Let me say something to you right now. If you are not born again, then you need to become born again. If you're watching this telecast right now, you go to church, but you have not experienced what I've just ministered to you, then you need to be born again. Jesus again said to Nicodemus, who, by the way, was a Jewish rabbi. He said, watch this, he's told, he told Nicodemus in John's Gospel chapter 3, he said, you know, in verse 3, he said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 5, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. My friend, let me say something to you. If you are not born again, then you need to be born again. If Jesus doesn't live on the inside of you, then you need to pray the sinner's prayer and invite Jesus to come into your heart and be your Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.